I'm Steve Troyer, I'm class of 86, and uh, I'm a uh, he, him, and uh, what else? Oh, okay, sir. I live in uh, Los Gatos, California. Um, sure, uh, I have. <clears throat> uh, about eight years ago, I founded a, uh, a cooperative uh, business, a company called the Bear Valley Co-op. Um, for folks from the Williams area, you're familiar with Mad River Glen. Um, you might not know, uh, you'll probably know that they're, they're a co-op. Uh, you might not know that they were founded by a Williams guy by the name of Roland Palmetto. His son was uh, uh, my dad's classmate and uh, class of 56. And uh, his son was one of my rugby club uh, players. Uh, so um, I use that Mad River Glen co-op model as a way uh, to start the Bear Valley co-op, uh, raise money from a, a community of people where we have a, a, a vacation home and uh, we uh, run, we, a few years ago we bought a cross-country uh, resort, Bear Valley Adventure Company, and we run that today year-round for the benefit of the surrounding community uh, and uh, that's pretty much what uh, keeps me occupied these days. Um, <clears throat> so over the years, I've had a number of, of uh, different uh, uh, major uh, projects or interests. Um, uh, one of the uh, more meaningful things for me has been um, uh, at the end of the uh, the last uh, uh, or the, the end of the last century, uh, I uh, um, had the opportunity to. Um, give back to the community uh, in Saratoga and the San Jose Silicon Valley area uh, where we were living and uh, there's a um, major um, agency there uh, called uh, uh, today it's called Momentum for Mental Health at the time it was called uh, Alliance for Community Care um, I, uh, my family has uh, been affected by um, mental health issues, uh, not just uh, in, in, in my era, but also in my, my dad's uh, mother's uh, time frame. And uh, <clears throat> I got interested in, in helping with them. I was on their board for about 10 years. Uh, and uh, in the process, we uh, took it from about a $14 million a year budget to a $20 million a year budget. And today, um, under their leadership, uh, today they're about a $60 million a year corporation and they're the number one provider of uh, both the mental health and also behavioral health, behavioral health services in uh, Santa Clara County. That's awesome and really, really meaningful work that you've been doing and, and that really personal connection I think makes that all the more impactful. So thank you for all of the work. Uh, mental health is becoming much more of an important conversation point so having extra hands sort of involved in, in supporting those efforts is, is always really, really nice to hear. Um, yeah, I, I work uh, in, in the tech world um, here in Silicon Valley. Um, I got started uh, um, about 30 years ago, right after business school. Uh, I, I kind of my, my Twitter bio says that uh, I'm a uh, a Rust Bowl refugee in, in, in Silicon Valley, and uh, uh, I joke when when I first started interviewing in, in tech companies, uh, people would ask me about uh, Williams, and I'd say, Yeah, I have a a double E from a liberal arts college. Uh, I studied English and economics. And sometimes they would laugh and sometimes not. And the ones who would laugh, you knew it was a, they were good people. <laughs> um, so uh, that has been a big focus for me uh, for that time frame. I started in, in uh, computer networking. I uh, worked with uh, companies like uh, 3Com and uh, Cisco, Juniper Networks, a number of other smaller uh, companies. And, uh, and then uh, about uh, 15 years ago, I uh, left uh, Juniper and, and started my own company, 
uh, that was using applications of networking technology for collection of data uh, in uh, public space environments so that, uh, so that uh, companies could uh, make decisions based upon that data. Uh, so the company uh, that we started is, is called Live Reach Media um, and I spent five years there uh, building that from nothing but an idea to uh, a viable company Today, uh, they're uh, doing pretty well. Uh, I've been out for about five years, and uh, uh, but it's been uh, uh, great to see their progress uh, and uh, to see something that I built from, from nothing. Um, and then more recently, I shifted into uh, cybersecurity, and then now uh, related to that, uh, uh, data security and privacy is a real a big issue. Uh, globally and also in the U.S. Um, and I started with a company during the pandemic called Helios Data. And Helios uh, basically enables companies to share data with partners for processing purposes. Uh, and I don't know that doesn't sound so sexy, but if you take it back to say what happened when Facebook shared data with Cambridge Analytica, uh, I'm sure they had a great legal agreement in place. I'm sure that uh, Cambridge Analytica, uh, at least uh, on the surface, uh, uh, they, uh, they, they were committed to, to the privacy of that data, uh, but uh, the reality was very different. And our software enables companies to have control over that process so that they um, can, can do the things that they want to do with the data without actually having it exposed. Um, experiences in, well, I'd say um, the, biggest, um, the biggest thing for me, both personally and professionally, uh, was my involvement in the rugby club um, for a couple of reasons. Um, uh, when I first went to Williams, you know, I, I uh, was ex so excited to, to be in college and to be away from my family and, and uh, I decided that I wasn't going to get involved in any um, sort of outside things. I was just going to focus on my studies and, uh, and, and so for the first semester at Williams, um, I, uh, I, I just focused on, on uh, studying. Now, people who know me and who are seeing this, they know that I'm lying right now. And uh, the thing about um, rugby was that it, it enabled me an opportunity to, uh, um, to, to both you know, be with like-minded people, to learn a new thing, a new sport that I'd never played before, um, to, uh, to learn a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, creative uh, uh, music and, and songs, uh, and uh, and it also um, uh, gave me sort of a, a discipline to my life. Uh, and I know most people don't, at, at Williams maybe don't think that, that rugby players are disciplined, but we, uh, uh, for me at least, it gave a focus to me. It gave me practice every week. It gave me, uh, you know, beer practice. I was the chief of protocol. Um, so. Um, and, and, and that sort of discipline socially uh, and personally uh, actually enabled me to do better as a student. Every year I, I did a little bit better and uh, I also stepped into leadership roles there. Uh, I helped take the club to Europe uh, on a tour of England and Wales. Um, we, uh, we, we got you know, horribly beaten, uh, particularly in, in Wales. Uh, but we were beaten everywhere. But then when we came back, we were undefeated, with the exception of Dartmouth, <laughs> who was the number one uh, team in the country at that time. So rugby has given me the opportunity to uh, to, to you know have focus um, uh, and then apply that um, to whatever I do in life. And then more importantly, um, looking back, um, a lot of great friendships. Um, friendships not only with the people that, that I knew when I was there, but you go to reunions, uh, rugby reunion, you get to meet people uh, from other classes, and so I've gotten to know other people uh, throughout the Williams years. Well, I think the, uh, the number one thing for me is, is family, 
and I, I define family in, in a you know, fairly traditional approach, but also in a, in a, in a broader approach. Uh, uh, for me, uh, everything uh, you know, since I, I got married uh, has, has led to a wonderful family. I have three children. Um, they're all mostly grown up. Uh, and uh, and so we've uh, you know really grown. I've personally grown tremendously from that, and I learn from my kids every day, not just about the the latest uh, uh, hip hop uh, uh, singers, but but also about uh, you know new generation and, and uh, the, the the things that are important to them and the challenges that they have on a on a day to day basis. But I, I, you know, my family's uh, broader than that. My uh, my father um, and mother, who uh, have been helping uh, in their late stage in life. My dad was class of '56 at Williams. Um, he uh, uh, taking it back to Williams. Uh, I, my father came to Williams from South Bend, Indiana, uh, and he was given an opportunity to go to Williams as a you know young. Uh, boy from uh, public school, uh, which back then was a diversity thing uh, for Williams. They were expanding beyond private school boys in, in, in the Northeast. And uh, he, uh, uh, he came from a family where you know, his mom had, had uh, mental health challenges. She was institutionalized when he was uh, a teenager. Uh, and uh, uh, that, that's one of the reasons why family is so important to me. My dad, through you know, through his life, through our lives as as children, you know, has always made it clear that uh, that that you know, the people in your family are, are the, the the people that you really need. They stick by you, and and you need to stick by them. Um, and so, for dad, going from that environment, that opened up a whole new world for him um, at Williams. Uh, I like to say that, you know, <clears throat> he likes to say that he was attracted to Williams by uh, an article in Life magazine from the 1940s where there was a fraternity par party featured in it. Uh, I think there were a few more reasons that he, that he went there, mainly because uh, he also had a great uh, financial aid package um, and uh, it made it a no-brainer over Harvard at the time. Um, so. Um, so, you know, we kind of define our family um, across generations, and, and Williams is a big part of that. Um, and uh, so all of my friends uh, and all of the people that I meet through those folks, I consider my family. Thank you very much. That's, that's been really interesting to hear and for you to share. Um, this, this notion of family in both the traditional sense of the found family has been pretty recurring theme um, across some of these interviews. Um, so thank you very much for sharing all of that. Um, we, we really appreciate your, your openness. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, there's, a, there's so many people for, for that role, but uh, uh, you know, going back to the, to the rugby club, uh, um, there was a, a, a gentleman who uh, was from England who was teaching in Williamstown in the late 1950s. And uh, his name was H. Peter Pearson. Uh, I got to know him um, later in his life uh, at uh, a rugby reunion. He was the uh, founder of the club along with um, a uh, a couple of uh, uh, boys from from Williamstown that uh, are from Williams, who uh, who really wanted to uh, learn the sport. He knew the sport from England, and he brought William, he brought uh, rugby to Williams. Uh, and uh, as I said earlier, um, it's uh, it's been a, a game changer for me, no pun intended. Um, and uh, I I really appreciate. Uh, um, his effort, as well as the, the founding students as well, too. Thank you very much. I mean, I, that's going to the source of like your, your club seems like a really, really fun connection point. Um, so thank you for sharing. That really rounds out the formal questions we have for you. Uh, are there any last thoughts you'd be interested in sharing? I just, uh, I, I've been watching you guys uh, travel around the country. Uh, it, it's not quite, uh, uh, the uh, the merry pranksters 
uh, but uh, you do seem uh, quite happy, uh, and uh, and and that that RV that's parked in my in my lot, um, I, I just I'm I'm just so glad that I don't live um, in 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 a more suburban uh, environment than where we live today. <laughs>